Oh yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It's the tea, cold tea. I, uh, today I'm gonna be talking about uh, Anisan Gibb and JJ and the fight that's coming up. Anisan Gibb, Jake Paul. Now, I am in no way, shape, or form a boxing expert. I am just about to talk about the weight loss journey that both JJ and Gibber, big fucking Gibber! I really like Gibb. I don't know Gibb personally, so. Congrats on everything. Uh, but I'm gonna be talking about the weight loss journey that he's been to, how that's possible, and how you can go through a transformation of that sort as well. Just with JJ, we talked about the bulking up before the Logan Paul 2 fight, where he got a little bit bigger, stronger, more power, and then shred down to fight weight, pretty much. Now, Gib made his transformation a couple years ago, I think in 2017-ish, 2018, you really saw a transformation happening with Gib. Uh, he was always a little, he's a, I don't think he's that tall. I am 5'7", he's like, I, I would assume he's 5'9"-ish, but again, I've never met him. Maybe he's uh, smaller, maybe he's um, a little bit taller. But what I've seen and heard in his video is that he was at some point 98 kgs. I've been through like four websites, nobody knows his height. <laughs> but 98 kilos is a lot of weight, especially when it's fat. You know, you can be super ripped and be 98 kgs. That means you just have a lot of muscle mass. Now, Gib uh, didn't have that muscle mass, but he went through a transformation, and which is awesome. And same thing with JJ. Uh, when JJ won the fight, I have a clip of my live reaction to it. JJ. Yes! Fucking go, baby! Woo! So yeah, again. I know I'm a little bit late, like a couple months, but still, congrats JJ on the win, it was really awesome. But we're here to talk about weight loss. Now, JJ, uh, he had a different type of weight loss than a Gib, I would guess. So again, I'm guessing, um, I don't know, but I know that JJ uh, bulked up and then shred down as much body fat as possible while maintaining as much muscle mass as possible. For Gib, in the beginning, I would assume uh, he wasn't really trying to maintain his muscle mass because he really didn't really have any He was just trying to lose body weight instead of body fat So body weight for Gib, body fat for JJ Which is very important because there's a different type of diet that you would put in um, For Gib, it was more important to be in a caloric deficit For JJ, it was also important to be in a caloric deficit but it was also important to have a higher protein intake. Now, I think um, Coach Richard, uh, shout out Coach Richard, uh, trained Gib or helped him lose his weight. And again, I don't know Gib, I do not know how exactly he did it, but I would assume, because Coach Richard knows what he's doing, it is because he upped his energy output. Now, there's an energy output and there's an energy input. So the output is how much work do you put in? How much are you working out? How much are you burning calories, right? On top of your daily lifestyle, where you are also gonna be burning calories by just living, uh, there's also gonna be a, an output of work, you know, the workouts, running, um, all that. And then there's gonna be an input. And the input is everything that you put in your body, which is the point where a lot of people go wrong because they put too much in and not enough out, which keeps a lot in, which makes you grow and become fat. Again, for Gibber, gamer, YouTuber, working really hard, but probably eating a lot, ordering a lot of food, he said in the video. So he was not making the most healthy uh, choices when it comes to food, and then you don't do anything in return for that to balance it out, and then you get fat. So you start going to the gym, you start burning more calories, start running, you start doing all that stuff, get your heart rate up, sweat out a little bit, so you burn more calories. Then, for example, if you eat 3,000 calories a day, but you only burn 2,500, you're in a 500 calorie surplus. Now, if you wanna balance it out, you have to work 500 calories extra to make sure you balance that 3K. Or you burn 2,500 and you eat 2,500, that's balanced. So it's either putting more energy out there so you, you increase the output or you decrease the input. So for Gib, I would assume he did both, which um, for a lot of people when they start out in the gym because they're fat, I mean, I'm gonna call it bluntly fat. Let's say you're fat. You, you think of yourself, you're fat, right? And it's okay, uh, people start from anywhere and it, you know, you should be proud of yourself or even you know, wanting to start, so that's really awesome. Let's say you're fat and you wanna change. Now, what a lot of people do is they go to the gym and don't change anything about their diet, right? So you try to balance that out. Uh, but it's very hard to balance when you have a very unhealthy diet because uh, it's very easy to eat a lot of calories without really knowing what's going on. 
you drink two glasses of Coca-Cola, you have a ton of calories. You add some mayonnaise to your fucking meals, a lot of calories. Uh, what a lot of people do, and what I would recommend is you do both, right? You go to the gym, and this could even be a little bit slower. It's okay to do 150 calories a day, for example, if you wanna go gym, but also your diet is where you're gonna make the most progress, because this is the lifestyle change, right? This is the way you're thinking about food, you're thinking about calories, you're thinking about your weight. What I do recommend people do, and I think what Gib did, is he increased his energy output and he decreased his energy input. So that combination, obviously, it doesn't even, it's like you're in a surplus because you, your input is too high and your output is too low. From there, you go output up and input down. So you have a deficit because you have more output, you burn more, and you have less input, so you eat less. So there's, this is the deficit. X amount of calories, could be 200 calories, could be 500 calories. Your body's gonna adjust and be like, oh, hold up, I'm not getting enough, I'm really hungry, and damn, I should adapt and take other energy resources, which comes in form of body fat or body weight. You know, your body takes the muscle tissue, your body takes the fat tissue, and that's where the difference com comes in between JJ and Gib, because JJ wanted to maintain as much muscle mass as possible to, you know, you know, to maintain that strength and that power, but Gib just wanted to lose body weight. So it's okay for him to lose some muscle mass, right? So he could go on a low protein diet and still be okay. I don't know if he did that, but that would be possible. For JJ, he had to be on a very, or very, he had to be on a high protein diet um, in order to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. Now, he will still lose some muscle mass if he shreds down. For fight, he'll lean down, he's still gonna lose some muscle mass, but at the same time, he won't lose as much. Now, personally, I'm super excited for the fight. Gib versus Jake Paul. I am team Gib because I like Gib better as a person. Again, I don't know either of them, so it's hard for me to judge, but for me to judge on internet personalities, I would go for Gib. But anyways, hope you guys thought this video was helpful. And if you want to lose weight, think about those things. Energy output, energy input. See how much you're eating and see how much you're working out. If you're doing no working out and a lot of eating, you're probably in the wrong if you wanna lose weight, right? You wanna up your work and decrease your food intake. Anyways, Faye Jasper here and I'm out. Deuces.